Okay. All right. There we are. So this is the big one. These are the big ones right here. This is the, this is the hardest thing. It's also the most valuable thing, too. So Andre, Bobby, and Chad are dividing an estate consisting of a house, small farm, and a painting using the method of sealed bids. Their bids on each items are given to the right. da 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 da, -da. All right, so this, this is, um, a, so the method we did in the first section was divider chooser, right? One cuts, the others pick. Here's another method. This is a method of dividing up um, a few objects. It's called sealed bids. It is actually used um, sometimes. Suppose you've got three kids, and they're dividing up their parents' inheritance. And the parents are leaving to the kids the house, the farm, the painting. Okay, how do you do this in a way that's fair? Now, you might say, well, you just sell the three things and just give them the cash. Maybe, but the, part of the problem with that is maybe somebody like the house is worth to them a lot more than it's going to get on the market, maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe the house is worth a ton to them or the farm or the painting or whatever, right? Diff again, the point is different people value things differently, so that's not going to truly be fair. So what is fair is this method of sealed bids. How it works is you ask each of them what they think the things are worth. You just ask them to write it on a piece of paper and turn in their bid sealed so other people don't see it. You hand it all to the lawyer who's doing the thing. So Chad says he thinks the house is worth $162,000. That's, that's how he values it. The farm is worth four thirty-five. dollars The painting worth fifty one. dollars Bobby, there's Bobby's and Andre's values for the house, farm, and painting. And, and then here's what you do. You, uh, the, first, the first thing you do, let me, um, let, me go, let, me, let me make it bigger. Yeah, that would be a good way. You guys want to write that down? On, um, I'm going to make it bigger. Is what I'm gonna, these, these questions making sense for you. Is this, is this good to hear? What's the first question? Describe the first settlement. Who gets the house? Well, coming back over here. See, Chad... No, not Chad. Andre gets the house right here because Andre bid the highest on the house. Andre bid the highest on the house. So that's why it says back over here, Andre gets the house. And uh, does the player who gets the house, Andre, pay money to or get money from the estate? Let's go back and see what's talking about. So we're talking about Andre right now, right? Who just got the house. So Andre, what is uh, how much is the house worth to Andre? Well, 168. And what did Andre think was a fair share to him? 218. So has Andre been given all that he thinks is fair, or is he still owed some? He still owed some. So now we're gonna what what do we call that? I don't know what I call the next column. Um, let's call it pay or get. The payer get from the estate. Okay, so from the estate's perspective, pretend you're the estate now. You're going to pay Andre, right? Whatever $218,000 minus 168 is. What is that? 50000 isn't it? I think it's 50000 So the estate is going to go negative 50000 Why negative? Because it's going out of the estate to Andre. See how it came out. So pay or get. Let's here's let me let me show you this way. It's it's um, item items minus fair. Yeah, that's what it is. So there that'll help. It's the items minus the fair. So I took the one sixty eight minus the two eighty and I got a negative fifty thousand. So the order matters there. Items minus what they thought was fair. Negative fifty thousand. Why is it negative? That means it's coming out of the estate to Andre. We're taking the estate's perspective. We're the lawyer representing the estate. Good so far? So we'll go back. We'll see the question here. See where it says um, the player gets money. We're talking about Andre still, right? I'm in this question. The player who gets the house, that's Andre. Andre here. He gets money from the estate. How much money? There it is, 50000 See that? Just like we knew. Is that good so far? Is that answer these questions? Next, they're going to ask who gets the farm. You guys okay with that first part? Next, they're going to ask who gets the farm. Well, clearly Chad gets the farm. So can you do the Chad calculation now? Do the Chad pay or get calculation. 
So they're going to ask, who gets the farm? You're going to say Chad. You're going to, they're going to say, does Chad pay or get money? How much? You know, so go ahead and do the same thing for Chad that we just did for Andre, which is what? Item minus fare. So for Chad, take his item, which is his $435,000 farm, minus what he said, his idea of fairness, 216. So whatever that is. Uh, 219? Positive. Positive, regular, 219,000, which means he's going to have to pay a bunch back into the estate, isn't he? Because he got too much, according to his own value system, right? He, he said the house was worth 435. He could have said whatever he wanted. He said that. And, he, and fair share for him was only 216. So he was given way too much. He's going to have to pay back the state 219,000. So that's positive because we're the lawyer. We're receiving that. It's positive to our estate account from Chad. 219,000. Not good? That's the next question they'll ask you. Stop me if I'm going too fast. And then third, it'll say, who gets the painting? And we know Bobby gets the painting. And now do the Bobby pay or get calculation. So with the Bobby, pay or get here, we're going to say, I don't know what we're going to say, 57, the item. So his item minus fare, Bobby's fare is 209, huh? So 57 minus 209 is minus 152. So minus 152,000. So that what, what's the minus mean? It's out of the estate. We're the, we're the estate. So that's out of the estate. In other words, Bobby's going to get paid a bunch of money because he only got the painting, which is way less than what he thinks is a fair share. Bobby's paid all that money from the estate, right? Are we good to there so far? Is this all making sense? All right, let's go back. There's a couple more parts to the question. It goes on and on and on. We're not quite done yet. That seems like, hey, there it is. We're done. But there's, there's something else. Let me show you. What is the surplus? What is the surplus? It's 17000 Where's that coming from? How are we getting that? We'll come back over here. Let's think about the surplus. Let's, let's calculate the surplus over here on the side. The surplus. Remember what's happening with the estate. Chad is paying two nineteen. Right, it's positive. He's paying it to the estate. Bobby's taking one fifty two out of the estate, and uh, Andre's taking fifty. So just simply use your calculator. What's that? Two hundred two, seventeen thousand. There it is. That's extra money. That's $17,000 extra. In other words, the people that paid in and the people that took out, there was $17,000 extra. There will always be extra. It'll always be extra money, not negative money. Always. Why? Because we gave the items to the highest bidder. So there's always extra. That's the money the lawyer gets. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm sure the lawyer gets way, way more than that. But um, $17,000. You ever seen that old Charles Dickens movie? What was it? I can't remember the name of it now. Some old Charles Dickens book turned into a movie. And the whole movie was about who was going to inherit something like big, long book, thick book, you know, like three-hour movie. And uh, all battling who's going to, somebody dies, somebody rich, and all these people, who's going to inherit, who's going to inherit. Very end of the movie, they finally figure out who gets to inherit the thing. They name him. He's all thrilled. And then they say, and here's the final recording. Oh, Attorney fees have swallowed the entire inheritance. 
because it was years of wrangling. That's, that's, real, that's real life, isn't it? The attorneys take it all in the end. All right. So $17,000 surplus. So that's extra. So assuming the attorneys get nothing, which is far from the truth, we're going to take that surplus and we're just going to give it back. We're just going to say, hey, we got $17,000 extra. Let's just divide that by three and give it back, even Stephen, to the different people. So um, I'll just call that give back or whatever. I don't know what to call it. Um, let, me, let me erase this here. This would be minus 50. I don't know, let me redo that. So that was 17,000. So now you take the 17,000. I'll just call this extra. Take, and then you divide by three because there's three people. The surplus is the extra, right? And what is 17,000 divided by three? It's, and, and they want me to round to the nearest dollar, I think, on this one. So it'd be five, six, six, seven. Did you guys get that? Five, six, 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 point six, six, six. So it rounds to five thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars. If I remember right, they said round to the nearest dollar on this one. So we're going to give them each an extra five, six, six, seven. Now, how, how, how are we going to do that? That's that's um, that's coming out out of the estate. So it's minus. Five six six seven, right? Minus five six six seven minus five six six seven. You with me? Because it's coming out of the estate. It's negative from the perspective of the estate. It'd be like a little bit of an accountant here. You could do the whole thing backwards and take the person's perspective. I've taken the estate's perspective. It's coming out of the estate, so it's negative from the estate's perspective, going to the people, right? So down here now we have the final. We're ready to calculate the final, final story. What's the final story? It is this. Final. Then you just do these numbers. 219 minus 5, 219,000 minus 5, 6, 6, 7, 213, 333. And then, with those 213, Three, three, three. And then in the middle, we're going to do... Now, these are both negative. So they're going to make a bigger negative, aren't they? They're going to make 157, 667 negative. Meaning that's a whole bunch of money coming out of the estate to that person. And the third column, finally, um, I can do that one by hand. Negative 55, 6, 6, 7. Again, negative coming out of the estate. There's the final allotment, right? So these two people, Bobby and Andre, are going to get more money from the estate. They're going to get a lot of money from the estate, especially Bobby. And then Chad has to pay into the estate that 213,333. And we're done. That's the final allotment. Let's go see the other questions. I'll come back and forth. So there's the 17,000 surplus we talked about. Uh, the player who gets the house gets 55,667. Is, is that what we had? Let's go see. 55,667. Yep. 556 gets. Right? Negative means comes out of the estate to the person. Right? Negative means negative from the estate's perspective. The person, the other person, 213333. 213333, yep, 213333. And the other one, 157.667. 157.667. That's the final deal. So do you see how it goes in its different stages? That's the whole problem. That's the whole thing. So they, they bid, you give the highest bidder the stuff, but you got to do their total and their fair share. And then you've got to reconcile how much they're going to get or pay back at first. Then you get the surplus, which is extra, divided by three and give it all back to them and do their final. Does that make sense? Questions on that one? It takes some practice because it's very easy to mess up a little part. Remember, I'm always doing it from the estate's perspective. So money going out of the estate's negative. Money coming into the estate's positive. So in the end, these two negative ones are going out of the estate to the person. 
a positive one is coming from the person to the estate. All right, you want to try one of those? No questions? We good? Shall we try one? Go to there. All right. So we'll do number three, and then we'll go back to number two. So um, Ann, Betty, and Chia, ABC, own a flower shop. They can't get along anymore and decide to break up the partnership using the method of sealed bids with the understanding that one of them will get the flower shop and the other two will get cash. Ann bids 330 Betty 360 Chia 300 How much money do Ann and Chia each get from Betty for their third share of the flower shop? That's a sealed bids problem. But there's only one object. So let me let me help. So so what do we do? We make a we make a table, and we go, Ann, Betty, and Chia, like that, and then, and they're, they're they're only bidding on the shop. That's the only item. They're each saying what they think the shop is worth, and Ann says she thinks the shop is worth three hundred and thirty. And Betty says it's worth 360. And Chia says it's worth 300. Okay. Let me help you out. So I can go right to the fair share now. I don't even have to do total because that is the total. There's not more than one item, huh? So there's no totaling here. There's only one item. So just go right to fair. What do I mean by fair? We're saying what's a fair share? How do you always do fair share? What do you divide by? Divide by three, the number of people, huh? You always divide by the number of people. With me on that? And all these fair share problems, we always divide by the number of people. So there's three people, so we divide by three. So go through and divide by three. Divide by three, divide by three. So, you know, you get a three by five card for the exam. When's the exam on this? So it's not till next week, huh? Next um, Wednesday. Wow, we got, we got a long time. That's a long time in the summer. Week from tomorrow, right after 4th of July. You'll just study all night, 4th of July. All right, so sorry, that's kind of an inconvenient time, but I could, can't really move it in summer. It's so tight. Um, all right, so divide them all by three. So there's what they think is a fair share. That's just making sense. In other words, Anne thinks the whole flower shop's worth 330 Divide that by three. So she thinks as long as she gets $110,000 worth of stuff, she's been treated fairly. And on you go. So that's what they each think is fair, right? Okay, now... Who gets the shop? Betty bid the highest. Betty gets the shop. The other two are going to get cash. So Betty gets the shop. The other two get cash. Now, you see why how the system works beautifully? If You might think, well, just bid higher. Well, if you, if you, if you falsely bid high, you're going to get the shop, yes, but you'll have to pay tons of cash because the higher you bid this, Divide it by three, your fair share, they're going to subtract that. And that's the amount you pay back. Like, like Betty, right now, Betty, she's being handed $360,000 in stuff. She said it. She said she thought the shop was worth three sixty. So now we do the, what did I call it? Get, pay get, the pay get, whatever you want to call it. The pay get line where we take the item they got, maybe they got nothing, two of them got nothing, minus their fair share. So definitely put one of these, you know, on your three by five card. Item minus fair share. So for Betty, her item, she got $360,000 shot minus fair share. So that's positive $240,000. I mean, she's going to have to pay $240,000 into the estate. You see why you wouldn't want to just bid high when you didn't really mean it? Because if you just bid high, 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 you're going to pay a bunch, bunch, bunch back into the estate. Because you, you're saying you were given something super valuable. You said it. See how the system forces honesty? It's a beautiful system. So go ahead and do the pay get for Ann and the pay get for Chia. So 
So item minus fare. So what, what, did, what did Anne get? What item, item minus fare, what item did Anne get? Nothing. Minus fare, okay, so it's minus 110,000. She got no item. Minus her fair share is negative 110,000, meaning she should be given negative out of the estate to her. She should be handed 110,000, right? Because that's what she thought was fair. And she didn't get any items, so she should get $110,000 cash straight. Is that okay? Am I making sense? Items, she got no items. Minus fair, so zero for Ann, minus her fair share is negative 110. Same thing for Chia. She got no items. She didn't get the, she didn't get the shop. Item, no items minus her fair share minus 100. She gets, she should get $100,000. The estate should pay her $100,000. Does that make sense? Questions I can answer on that? Is that making sense? It's item minus fair. Now, we got to calculate the surplus. Can you do that? Let me let you do that real quick. I'll just do it up here or whatever. See if you can figure out like the extra money after the paying and receiving and all that. There, there's always extra. There's always extra because we give the items to the highest bidders. So it always leaves extra. That's the genius of this. You guys know how to do the surplus? You just add up. Surplus, just add up the pay get line. That's all you do. So you just take the minus 110 plus the 240 minus the 100, right? I just took these three. That's all you got to do. You're just adding up the stuff coming in and going out of the estate. That's all you do. So what, what do you get? It's a minus, two, minus 210. 30? 30. It's really 1,000, huh? It's really 30. I just skipped the zeros, right? Comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. Comma zero zero zero. So it's thirty thousand dollars surplus extra in the estate. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be twenty twenty thousand for Anne for the pay get? So the pay get is the pay get is the item they got. Oh, oh wait, for Anne? Yeah. So 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 for Anne, the, the pay get is the item they got. Anne got no items. Right, the, Anne got nothing. The only person that got an item was Betty. She got the flower shop. So the item that Anne got is nothing. So it's zero minus her fair share. So it's just a fair share. Same thing for Chia. Yeah, good. Other questions? Is that making sense? So the surplus is thirty thousand. Then what do you always do with the surplus? Yeah, and so, yeah, so they the what what I call it extra extra. I called it extra. You take the $30,000 surplus, divide by three, right? Surplus divided by three, which is 10,000. So they each get 10,000. Now, that's always negative, isn't it? Because it's coming out of the estate. The extra is always negative from the estate's perspective. Negative 10,000. And so then we have the final. The final story. This good so far? Am I making sense? We had thirty thousand extra dollars, right? I just added up the pay get stuff, and there was thirty thousand extra dollars. Then I say, what are we going to do with that? We divide it by three. So we always do. We take the surplus and divide by the number of people. Ten thousand. You give them all ten thousand, which means negative. It's out of the estate, and then you just add up these numbers. And what is that? Negative one hundred and twenty thousand. And these numbers would be positive 230. And these numbers, negative 110. There it is. When all is said and done, there's, there's how the flower shop will be divided up. Betty will get the shop. But she'll pay her friends the final allotment of $230,000. And Anne will take her $120,000 and walk away. Chia will take her hundred and ten. dollars almost seems unfair. Why did Anne get more than Chia? They both just got cash 
Why did Ann get more cash than Chia? Ten thousand. Because she bid higher on the shop. Well, you think, well, she should just bid higher then. Well, yeah, if you know what the other person is bidding, it'd be best to bid 359000 Bid right under them. That way they get the shop and you get as much money as possible. But you don't know what they're bidding. That's the whole point. It's a sealed bid. So if you go too high, you're going to get the shop and have to pay a bunch of cash back. So it is not in your best interest to do anything other than be honest. The, the system forces you to really list your honest. If you, if, you, if you try to fool it and bid high or bid low, you're going to wish you had not because it'll make you pay. It's a beautiful system. It forces fairness. People to write down their honest bids. And, to get, and everybody gets what they believe is fair. Right? Look, look, at, look at Betty. She, she believed that as long as that she got $121,000 worth of stuff, right? Because she said the flower shop's worth three sixty. That's what she said. She could have said whatever she wanted. If she lied, that's on her. She said that the shop was worth three sixty. So divide by three people, she should be getting $120,000 worth of stuff. What did she get? She got the whole shop and paid two thirty. dollars but subtract those. I mean, she still got $130,000 worth of stuff, more than she even thought was fair. Same thing for the others, right? Look at Ann. Ann, or look at Chia Simple. Chia thought the whole shop was worth three hundred. Divide by three, therefore she should get $100,000 worth of stuff. What did she get in the end? 110? She got even better than she thought. See how the system ends up giving everybody even better than what they themselves thought was fair? It's a beautiful thought. It's a beautiful example of how math can force it to be fair. Questions on that? Does that make sense? All right, you ready for the big, terrible, awful, yucky one? It sounds exciting, huh? All right. It's just they put in like five items. So it's just it's the same thing. It's just tedious with all those items. All right, back to number two. Here we go. There we go. Alan, Bill, and Carson are dividing the five items using the method of sealed bids. Oh, I got to make that bigger, don't I? Yeah, let me go back and then I'll let you guys write it. All right. Yeah, you guys want to write that down real quick? Write that down and then let's just start cranking through it. You know, the first column will be total. And then there'll be fair, which is total divided by something. I'll let you think on that. And then the pay get, which is items, all the items. People are going to get more than one item in this, this problem. So you're going to have items, items minus fair is the pay get. All right. So does everybody see how I circled those, right? Alan is the highest bidder in item number one. Alan is also the highest bidder in item number two. Carson's the highest bidder in item three. Alan's the highest bidder in item four. And Carson's the highest bidder on item five. Bill gets nothing. Bill never, he'll get cash, but he never bid highest on any items. So he doesn't get any items, but he's going to get a bunch of cash. Right? Is that good? So now go ahead and do the do the pay get up here, I guess. So um, what what items does Bill get? None. So his items are zero minus his fair share. So it's just minus his fair share. We good there? It's just negative Bill's fair share. Uh, yeah, Bill's fair share. Next comes Carson. So we have to add up Carson's things, his 20,000, his 26,000, his two items, minus his fair share, 31, 666, 67. And I'm getting 14, it's positive, 14,333. Point thirty three, So he's going to pay into the estate, isn't he? That's positive to the estate. Because he got more than he thought was fair. And then for Alan, 
23, 31, 18, minus his fair share, 38, 333.33. Everybody good with that? You just add up Alan's three items and subtract his fair share. That's what we always do. The stuff they got minus what they thought was fair, that's the pay, get, extra. Right? We're calculating what they owe back or are owed by the estate, right? And it's what they received minus what they thought should be fair. Does that make sense? Whatever you gave them, items, take away what they thought was fair. If there's any extra, we owe them some. If not, they owe us some. If they were given too much or too little, right? So I'm getting positive thirty-three thousand six 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 point sixty-seven. In other words, Alan's going to have to pay into the estate quite a bit because he got way too much stuff. He got more than he thought was fair. We okay to there? Is that making sense? Questions I can answer to that point. Now we need to calculate the surplus, right? So we go calculate the surplus, and then we'll have the extra amount they each get back. And then we'll have the final. Uh huh. Did, did you subtract thirty-eight thousand from one fifteen thousand? No, I added up the three items and subtracted the thirty-eight. Right, because it's items minus fair. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You always add up all the items they were they got minus the fair amount they should have got. Right, that's the difference. So did you guys get the surplus? $13,333.33. Is that okay? So, so surplus, you just add up the pay get lines, right? You just, you just use your calculator and you just add and subtract the pay get lines. That's how we get the surplus. 13333.33. And then you divide that by 3. Again, there's three people. We're not dividing by five ever. There's three people. You're always divided by the number of people. Divided by three people. And that's the extra. The extra is 4444.44. Four, four, four so and that's a negative, isn't it? Negative 4444.44. Point forty four negative four thousand four hundred and forty four point forty four. It's negative because it's coming out of the estate. Is that good? Now we 
doing? We getting there? All right, we ready to wrap this one up? I'm getting a little tired of this problem. How about you? You're almost ready. Final allotment. We just add up the pay get and the extra, right? So these two, these two, and these two. Just use your old calculator. I'm getting negative 39111.11. And the next one. Positive 9888.89. And the final one 33.66.67 minus. There it is. You read all those numbers? Sorry, they're down there. There we go. All right. Is that good? Everybody read those final allotment numbers? Okay. 39, negative 39, 111.11. Positive 9,888.89. The final one is 29,222.23. You see that one? So there's the final story. Everybody see how I got those? Is that making sense? So that's the most tedious thing probably in the course right there. Is those. I don't know. There's a couple other things that are tedious. But that's pretty tedious. That problem specifically. Good. Can I leave that one behind us? We happy with that one? All right. I'm going to, if you're good with that one, I'm going to.